In Dark Souls 3, the Deep is without a doubt one of the most mysterious and interesting concepts mentioned in the game. Part of my personal fascination comes from its obscurity, but mostly it's because the game makes an effort to show that the Deep, although related to the Dark, is not the Abyss. It is its own thing, with its own organization and with goals distinct from the other Dark-aligned groups, like Dark Stalker Koth and the Hollows of Londor. Which, of course, begs the question, what is the Deep? How is it different from the Dark? And most importantly, what is the age of the Deep Sea that Aldrich dreamt of? In my opinion, the meaning of concepts like fire, dark, chaos, and the Deep are the most interesting aspects to the lore. We know that Miyazaki draws from archetypal myths and utilizes them in his games. By understanding the source of these mythological motifs, we can better understand what these concepts symbolize, and thereby get a clearer picture of Dark Souls' plot. Providing this clarity by using archetypes from comparative mythology, as well as in-game evidence, is what I will attempt to do today. Let's go ahead and get started with my first point. In Dark Souls, sin makes human souls heavy, which causes them to sink into the deep. Psychostasia is a common religious motif in which a human soul is weighed in order to assess its guilt and judge its fate. This is often done by literally weighing them on an actual scale. In Christianity, Archangel Michael is often depicted with a set of scales which he uses to weigh souls on the Day of Judgment. Likewise, the Testament of Abraham, a pseudepigraphic text of the Old Testament, depicts angels weighing the souls of humanity. In Egyptian myth, Anubis, god of the underworld, would weigh the hearts of the dead, on scales, against the feather of Ma'at, goddess of truth and justice. The soul was thought to reside in the heart, and if it balanced with the feather, then they would be permitted to enter the kingdom of Osiris. However, if the soul was deemed too heavy, the scale would not balance, and the soul would be devoured by the goddess Amit. A soul burdened with sin increases in weight. The Dark Orb and Dark Beat sorceries from Dark Souls 1 mention the fact that they are heavier, more tangible, and closer to matter in nature due to their use of human souls. The human dreg item description reads as follows. Dregs are the heaviest things within the human body and will sink to the lowest depths imaginable, where they will become the shackles that bind this world. The word dreg has several meanings, all of which apply aptly. It is a sediment that sinks to the bottom of a liquid, such as a coffee dreg at the bottom of a cup. It also means the least desirable part of something, such as in the phrase, the dregs of humanity. The nature of human dregs is revealed by the fact that they look identical to a humanity sprite that is in the process of sinking. It also resembles the rite of kindling from Dark Souls 1. Kindling is the art of feeding bonfires with humanity, and depicts a humanity sprite doubled over and burning. A human dreg, then, is literally just a normal human soul that is heavy with sin. This weight causes them to sink to the lowest depths imaginable, where they become the bedrock of this world. And this place that human souls sink into, the lowest depths inhabited by the dregs of mankind, is the deep. The deep soul spell description reads, Fire's dark soul dregs. Souls which swell from the deep pursue their target, drawn towards life. The great soul dreg spell reads, a sorcery that fires great dark soul dregs that have stewed for ages, far within the deep. Which brings me to my second point. What exactly is the deep? Well, in Mesopotamian mythology, Apsu is the primordial god of fresh water. Apsu is the name both of the god and the primeval sea that lies beneath the underworld. It was believed that sources of fresh water, such as wells, springs, and lakes, drew their water directly from Abzu. His name is composed of the word Ab, which means water, and Zu, which means deep. Abzu then means deep water, and is an example of the cosmic ocean motif found in many cultures. It is this motif, and Abzu specifically, that I believe is Miyazaki's inspiration for the deep. In Dark Souls 3, the deep is a kind of underworld. It is a deep sea located at the bottom of existence. And it's not just a metaphor, it's an actual body of water. The murky hand scythe wielded by Merkmen that rise from the deep is described to be enveloped by a black dampness. 
These weapons are damp, because the deep is a literal underground ocean. The Deep Protection Miracle states, The deep was originally a peaceful and sacred place, but became the final rest for many abhorrent things. This tale of the deep offers protection for those who would worship amidst those horrors. Many items in the game describe the deep and the things that live inside it as repulsive, abhorrent, stagnant, grotesque, and perilous. And of course they are all those things, because they are the worst of humanity. The dregs of mankind whose sin-laden souls have sunk to the bottom and corrupted the one sacred deep. It is an underworld, a kind of hell of sin and stagnant water, where the heaviest souls find their final rest. Now, that brings us at last to Aldrich and the Age of the Deep Sea. The question here is what exactly Aldrich is trying to do. His soul states the following. When Aldrich ruminated on the fading of the fire, it inspired visions of a coming age of the deep sea. He knew the path would be arduous, but he had no fear. He would devour the gods himself. What happens when an object sinks into a body of water? The water level rises. The age of the deep sea is a world where so much humanity has fallen into the deep that water bursts onto the surface and floods the world, bringing all of its corrupted horrors with it. Now, at first glance, it seems like Aldrich and his followers are a religion similar to the Sable Church of Londor, both in competition in attempting to bring about their coming age. However, that is not what is happening. Aldrich's soul description is not a statement of ambition. It doesn't say that he wants to or is trying to bring about the age of the deep sea. It merely says that it's coming, and that the path ahead would be arduous. I believe... Aldrich is not eating gods to bring about the coming age. The deluge is coming one way or the other. What he is doing is accumulating the strength to survive. Let's talk for a moment about flood myths. Flood myths are extremely prevalent among world cultures, and they often share striking commonalities. I read now from the Oxford Companion to World Mythology. Flood myths are found in all parts of the world, usually as aspects of creation stories, Generally, the flood marks a new beginning, a second chance for a sinful humanity, or for creation itself, as in the Hebrew mythology in the biblical book of Genesis. The flood waters become a second version of the primeval maternal waters, a vehicle of rebirth as well as a cleansing element. End quote. Flood myths are associated with divine punishment to a sinful humanity, and the waters of the flood parallel the primordial waters of creation, the deep in Dark Souls, is such a story, and Aldrich is the flood hero who sees the coming danger and works to survive the ordeal. Finally, because I couldn't find anywhere else to put this section, let's discuss why the Dark and the Deep are conceptually different. Weapons and spells associated with each deal dark damage, and they are both related to humanity. So what's the difference? Well, it's mostly that while Dark and humanity go hand in hand, it is not necessarily a representation of evil, or depravity, or sin. There is a kind of purity to the abyss that the deep does not enjoy. The deep is exemplified by its corruption. It is a darkness beyond human ken. It is a derangement and cruelty, achievable only by human dregs. It is an underworld for sinners. This is made most obvious by Arena of Karim. Someone there? Anyone? Oh, please, whoever you are, touch me. The dark surrounds me, nibbles at my flesh. Little creatures, they never stop biting. So please, hold out your hand and touch me. The insects Irina is referring to are creatures of the deep. The locust preacher has this to say about Irina. And so, she lived in fear of the dark of the things that gnawed at her flesh. And yet, the abyss hath yet to produce any such creature. Arena mistakes the dark as the source of her fears. But it is not the dark of man that torments her. It is her own guilty soul that draws her into the deep. And that's pretty much all I have to say on the subject. I really enjoy making these kind of Dark Souls lore videos. I might be like, what, 
five years, ten years late to the party. But as far as I can see, I'm tackling these subjects with tools that I don't see many other people using. Not that there's nobody, but in my opinion, not nearly enough. Anyway, hopefully you found my perspective valuable. And until next time, thank you very much for watching.